This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. I Love a Mystery. A Carlton E. Morse audio novel featuring Jack, Doc, and Reggie, specialists in crime and adventure. Now following the northwest trail of a missing millionaire, a killer cougar, and the Phantom Castle. This is Fred Foy introducing Jim Harmon's presentation of Les Tremaine and Tony Clay in an original Carlton Morse thriller, The Fear That Creeps Like a Cat. Six o'clock in the evening in the Seattle Hotel somewhere on the edge of Lake Union. The three comrades, Jack, Doc, and Reggie, are launched on a million-dollar manhunt. They had just overcome three gunmen in their hotel room when there was a knock on the door, and the girl's voice cried out, They're going to kill me. Get that door open. Doc, Reggie, hey, what's the matter? Sprawled on the floor outside our door. I say, is she dead? Where do we get her inside? Give me a hand, Reggie. Right, Joe. Keep an eye on the hall, Doc. Okay. Here we go. Easy with her. She's breathing. Shut the door, Doc. Uh-huh. Nobody in the hall. Yeah. Right here on the bed. Hey, will you look what we got this time? Darn she ain't even prettier than the other girl. What is it, Jack? What's the matter with her? She must have fainted. Doesn't seem to be anything else the matter. Well, that's a relief. Looky, son. Did you ever see anything prettier than them long eyelashes? I'm more interested in who she is. And why she came screaming to our door, saying they were going to kill her. I'd just like to see anybody try killing her. You know, Jack, all my Texas chivalry... Forget your Texas chivalry and go get a glass of water. Just the same if I can fight for this little old gal's honor. Will you get me a glass of water? All right, all right. Help me get her out of her coat. Right. Hold her up a bit. Uh, there we are. She was confined in her pockets. Dressed a bit on the expensive side. Yes. Look at that diamond on her finger. Water for baby, Jack. Yeah. I say, Jack, here's a letter addressed to Jeanette Archer. Archer? Here, let me see that. Quite. Hey, look. We're hunting for a guy named Alexander Archer. Of course. Wonder if Curly Locks here is any relation. Jeanette Archer. Do either of you remember the insurance company saying anything about a girl by that name? Heck, I don't remember half them insurance guys told us. Pour some of that water on this towel and bathe her forehead, Doc. Now you're talking, son. That's a job I'd really like. I wish those final instructions from the insurance company would get here so we could get out of Seattle. Oh, I don't know. We ain't going to find any gals as pretty as this up yonder in the woods. But couldn't we go without the information? I'm going to chance it if they don't hurry up. She ain't showing no signs of coming around. Give her time. Haven't we got all the important information we need? We know that Alexander Archer had a million-dollar insurance policy. We know that on evidence presented by his estate, he was declared dead by the courts. That the insurance company still thinks he's alive and hiding somewhere up along the Canadian coast. Yeah, and it's our job to bring him back if he is alive. And now we know more than that. I say we do. Well, we know that there's a group of people mighty anxious not to have us go on with this man. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? First that pretty female girl that come in toting a pistol, and then that old guy... Oh, look here. Huh? Well, what's the matter? That chappy you knocked unconscious in the bathroom, he's still in there. Uh, hey, that's right. Uh, there's too many things happening. Reggie, go throw him out in the hall. With pleasure. Well, there's one thing, son. We sure are popular. We've been in Seattle about an hour, and here at the hotel about half an hour, and look at all the visitors we've had. I wish I knew where this girl fits into the picture. Well, if she don't fit in no place, can I have her? <laughs> you practically got her now. I didn't tell you to hold her head in your lap. Well, Dad busted. It's easier to bathe the forehead this way. Just dump him out in the hall any place, Jack. Yes, why not? 
How bad is he hurt? Nah, he's just sleeping off a sock in the kisser. Throw him out. Hey, you know something, Jack? No, what's the matter? There's something kind of indelicate. Maybe I ought to mention. Indelicate? Yeah. A real Texas gentleman don't see what he ain't supposed to see. But when we picked up this pretty little old honey out yonder in the hall... Well, what about it? Well, fella, to tell you the truth, if you was to look, not that I think you should, you understand, but if you was to look, I bet your money you'd find a little old stabbing knife strapped to this baby's leg just about a right knee. You're sure? It was an accident. I just couldn't help seeing it. Oh, don't be a hypocrite. Jack, I ain't no hypocrite. You don't say things like that. Where's a knife, huh? The Linda Joyce girl carried a gun and this one a knife. Yeah. Looks like all the cats in the Northwest got claws, don't it? She doesn't show any signs of consciousness yet? Nope. Sleeping like a baby. Jack, Jack, I say, Richard Cooper. What about him? He's coming down the hall. Hey, you mean Grandpa's coming to pay us another visit? I'm not sure. I got back in the room the moment I saw him. One, I should frisk him again if he asked to come in here? Yes. Just leave the wet cloth on the girl's brow and get over by the door. Ain't much fun to hold an unconscious girl head in your lap anyway. Hmm. I was wondering whether that was romance or your mother instinct, Doc. How would you like a bust in the eye? <laughs> Doc, you're behind the door. Reggie, you open it. I'll have him covered. Company's here. Open up, Reggie. Uh, gentlemen. I say, it's Mr. Cooper, Jack. What does he want? Uh, may I come in? He wants to come in, Jack. All right. Please, step in, Mr. Cooper. I'm afraid I'm getting to be an awful bother. <laughs> Hold still, fella. Here, are you behind me again? Looks like it, don't it? Keep your hands out in front of you, Cooper. Am I uh, subjected to this indignity every time I come into this room? It's not a bad idea. No, P ain't carrying nothing, Jack. What in the world gave you the idea that I might be armed? Everyone else visiting us has been. By the way, as I came down the hall, I noticed something rather unusual. That so? Yes. The body of an unconscious man. Better out of place in a hotel of this distinction. Did you call the management? No, I never like to get mixed up in unpleasant matters of that nature. Besides, the management is upset enough as it is. Two men dived into the bay from someplace up on this floor. Dived in my grandma. We throwed them in. Is that so? They said they dived in. Well, never mind that. What do you want this time, Cooper? I came for my daughter. I say, your daughter? Yeah, she's a little bit eccentric. She has fainting spells. Fella, you're just lousy with eccentric daughters, ain't you? I beg your pardon. That's what I said. First, we grab a gal carrying a gun. In her pockets, a telegram saying her name's Linda Joyce. You come along and say her name's Laura Cooper. Next, we find the girl outside our door in a dead faint after yelling somebody's trying to kill her. And in her pockets, a letter saying her name's Jeanette Archer. And now you say her name's Cooper. That's right, Brenda Cooper. Now, if you'll allow me to carry the child back to her room... Hold it, Cooper. You mean you're not going to let me have her? That's right. But this is outrageous. Maybe. But the child needs medical attention. Besides, I object to leaving my daughter in this room with three strange men. How do you account for the fact she's carrying a letter with the name Jeanette Archer? Easily. Jeanette Archer's a friend of hers. In fact, they're roommates at college. That sounds silly. My good man, are you going to let me take my daughter back to her room? Or will I be obliged to call the police? Say, that's not a bad idea. Now, see here. I don't want trouble with you men. I'll admit my daughters are a bit wild. I'm not holding you responsible. Don't move or open your mouth, Cooper. A gun? Yes, a gun. Doc, open the door a crack. If there's any funny work, Cooper's going to be sorry. Okay, fella. Hey, it's a bellboy. He's got a telegram. Take it and close the door. Sure. Thanks, son. Here you are. Got it? You bet you. Reggie, look up the number of the police department. Get them on the phone. Now, now, don't be hasty. You're the one who suggested it. 
I had no intention of calling them. I, in fact, I have every good reason for not calling. You ain't kidding now, mister. Yes, my daughter's names have been in the papers before. Nothing serious, you understand. Wild parties. Please save them any further notoriety. Here it is, Jack. Get them on the wire. You, you, you're going to insist on it? That's right. I say, get me main 4400, please. In that case, I shall withdraw. Suit yourself. I, I hope you realize you are breaking an old man's heart. I suppose there's a little old gray-haired mother with a shawl around her shoulders somewhere in the background, too. <sighs> Good evening, gentlemen. <laughs> we sure bluffed him out of that one. Bluffed nothing. What's the matter, Reggie? Haven't you got them yet? They're on the wire, but they asked me to hold the line a moment. Doc, let me see that telegram. Uh, oh, yeah. From the insurance company, you think? Probably. Uh, what's it say? It's what we've been waiting for. Oh, right -o. Hold the line a moment. Here they are on the wire, Jack. Let me take them. Hello. Listen. There's an unconscious girl by the name of Jeanette Archer up in room 232 of the Crawford Arms Hotel. Get here quick or she'll be kidnapped. Never mind who this is. Get here and step on it. Hey, Jack, if we stick around here and get mixed up with the police... We're not going to stick around. Reggie, tear all the sheets off the bed. Righto. But look it, fella. Doc, will you stop asking questions and start tying these sheets together? Okay, fella. But if I'm a flying hip or not, sir, if I know why... Be careful of those knots. They've got to hold our weight. I say we're going out the window. That's just what we're doing. But doggone it, Jack, the lake's down below us. Then we'll get our feet wet. I'll say we will. Clean up to our necks. Here, here. Move one of the beds over to the window. Come on, Reggie. Doggone it, things ain't getting crazier in a lunatic asylum. You fellas get out of your coats and wrap some extra clothes in them and tie them to your backs. We're going to have to swim for it. But why the heck don't we just walk out of the place? Because you crazy fool, Cooper and his gang would see us. They'd see we didn't have this girl with us, and they'd break in here and grab her. We ain't going to take her with us? You bet we're not. Let the police come and get her. There. That ought to hold our weight. You ready, Reggie? Right. Then out with you while I'm getting ready. We'll meet in those bushes over there beside the lake. See you later. So long. Hey, you know, that water's going to be cold. Never mind that. Watch Reggie. As soon as he drops into the lake, you go down. Dad, rat it. I know these riches are going to shrink if they get wet. Where do we go from here, son? There. I'm ready. There's a motorboat waiting for us down on the Puget Sound. Reggie's down. Here I go. Hurry up. You bet. Motorboat, huh? Doc, they're here. Hurry up. Hey, Jack, something's giving way. Look out! Oh, that's beautiful. Now I've got to dive. Well, here goes nothing. Oh, wee. Cuss these blame britches. They're choking me to death already. Adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie have come to you in I Love a Mystery. Created and written by Carlton E. Morse. Scripts copyrighted by Morsel Co. Incorporated. Produced and directed by story editor Jim Harmon. Featuring Les Tremaine as Jack Packard and Tony Clay as Doc Long. Consultants Frank Brzee and David Lloyd. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.